we publish around about 200 statistical sets of statistical information each year. We also have to answer queries about the statistics that we publish. So members of parliament can, can ask questions and ask, ask for information, and we get a, a few hundred of those each year. Since the early 2000s, since the Freedom of Information Act in the UK, we've also been responsible for answering information uh, that have been posed uh, under FOI requests. And that number is increasing. So what, what's happening in the department is there's a big programme of welfare reform. Uh, the demand for, for the number of official statistics that we produce is increasing quite rapidly. And the, the request for, for further statistical information has been increasing quite rapidly as well. Of course, that uses a lot of resources. So, we try to speak to our users. What do you want from statistics and, and data? These were the key themes that they wanted. They wanted data in a format that they could easily get hold of. Uh, and, they, and, and really importantly as well, they wanted to be able to reuse that data without restrictions. They wanted some really detailed data. If you're outputting statistics in Excel spreadsheets, you're really restricted as to what you can provide to users. Geography was a real particular need for users in the UK. They wanted to go down to the lowest level of geography. Our official statistics tended to go down to a very broad local government level and nothing below that. If they wanted to try and get those statistics themselves, they wanted to, to, to uh, fetch those data and, and, and not, be, uh, not be dictated to as to what statistics and what breakdowns that they could gather. So there was a bit of self-service that they wanted as well. Uh, users wanted to know what, what does that data what does that data mean? Are the were the points in that data where something happened that affected the the, the data? What codes uh, do we use? They didn't want to be I sort of mentioned this a little bit. They didn't want to be dictated to over what what. Uh, data and statistics they could get hold of. So we used to produce a ta tables which had age groups. Uh, so how many people claim a benefit by particular age groups? And we used to say, these are the age groups you're getting, 18 to 24, 25 to 39, 40 to 59, 60 plus, four age groups, and that's it. Uh, well, quite rightly, users said, well, why can't we do our own age groups? Uh, why can't we build our own geographies? Why can't we build a table which gives a breakdown of age by gender, by ethnicity, by geography? Uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. And the, and the reason we couldn't do it is because the output available to us didn't allow us to do it. So what happened was that users used to come to us and we used to produce those tables for them. And we don't charge for producing tables, so it used to cost us a lot of money. It used to take, a lot, take up a lot of time. Of course, we wanted what the users want. That goes without saying. So we wanted what the users want. But we had a couple of uh, additional things that we needed. We needed to ensure that any statistics and data that we put out, out into the public domain maintain the privacy of, of claimants in the UK. So we needed to maintain confidentiality. Uh, that's important because as a producer of an official statistics, I have to abide by the code of practice for official statistics in the UK. More importantly, we have to abide by acts of parliament. Uh, there's a Social Security Act in the UK. And if we, if we knowingly release information on individual claimants, we're liable for a prison sentence as a result of that. So we have four products that we release for universal credit. So we have a, what we call a statistical first release. Believe it or not, our statistical first releases, you had to probably go down to page five or so to get the first bit of useful data. Uh, so it, our first page was all about the departments and then contact details and then issues with the data and whatever. So we've redesigned our first release for universal credit and, and the front page looks like that. That is the front page of, of universal credit. Uh, we, we've removed all of the junk from it and it's just the key messages. We know that people are using them because we're, they, those charts and those key messages are regularly getting uh, used on social media. So we know that that's working to some extent. We still produce the Excel tables. So we haven't got rid of Excel tables altogether. Why haven't we got rid of Excel tables? It's because some people still quite like to have summary tables. Uh, and it's a useful, useful way uh, of, of getting to some detailed data relatively quickly, particularly journalists like Excel tables. However, our Excel tables for universal credit Ha there, there are probably only about half a dozen of them. So we've cut down from uh, producing 30, 40 uh, tables of data to maybe half a dozen of key statistics. We try to be a little bit more visual in terms of our, our statistics. So one of the products that we've used is, a, is an interactive map, uh, which has gone down really well. And finally, a little bit of software. 
uh, that these guys probably want me to mention. Uh, so this is, a, this is a, the software that, that underpins, and it's fair to say that this software underpins those three other uh, products that we produce. So this is uh, SuperWeb 2. We've rebranded it as Static Explore. So it's called Static Explore, and that's, that's just our, our name for, for the product. All of those other products uh, use uh, Super Web Static Explore uh, to, to, get, to get their figures from. The data goes into Static Explore, and we use that to, for, to produce other uh, products. Some of the key features, and this goes back to the needs of the users. So it is a self-service model, so Static Explore. The users can go in. We, 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 we allow users and we encourage users to register for the service, but they don't need to. Uh, but they can go in and they can access data themselves and they can customize data. So I talked about age groups before. They can create their own age groups if they want to. So we release data at individual age level and they can create whatever age groups they want. It can handle really large, complex data sets. So the first data set we put into Static Explore was around people claiming a benefit called housing benefit in the UK. That data set now has about 400 million rows of data in there uh, and is really complex in terms of the breakdowns that are available. That data set with 400 million rows of data sits behind Static Explore. So we don't, we don't aggregate it, uh, we don't produce data cubes, it is a, a database of, of individuals. What's really important, goes back to confidential, confidentiality, is statistical data, uh, statistical disclosure control. So this is built into Stat Explore. Uh, we've we've customised it to some extent, but it's built into Stat Explore. And what that means is we can be confident no matter how much detail a user goes down to, an individual can't be identified from that data. Okay. I, I just wanted to illustrate uh, a couple of, uh, again, short screen capture videos. Just play this one. So this this. Uh, video <laughs> illustrates the ability to delve down into detailed geographies as one of our key uh, requirements from users. So we've built in a hierarchical geography classification in the table uh, and it's really easy to to start at the top level and delve down and delve down if you if you're a user and the, and the data uh, would will be retrieved automatically. So this is cycling through some eight or nine layers of statistical classification, uh, geography classifications. So it starts at the GB level and it will eventually go down to uh, a geography classification called census output area in the, in, in the UK. Census output area is incredibly detailed based on a very small number of population or households and there are about 200,000 census output areas across uh, Great Britain. So it, it's, a, it's a classification that was a real need for our users and, and you can see how easy it is to go down to the very, very lowest level. That, that's the lowest level it goes down to. Some very small numbers in there, but, but bear in mind those numbers have had disclosure control applied to them. So it looks like we're releasing very detailed information, but it's safe information as well. The other short video is a little bit that's, uh, that's improved a lot in the, in the Super Web 2 software, and that's the, the chart functionality. Uh, so I'm just going to just build a quick age by gender breakdown and show it in a chart. And, and the illustration of this is that the, the charts are, are, are now quite nice and quite interactive, so you can use them on their own, and you can certainly reuse those charts as well. So it's relatively easy. Build a table, click on graph view, chart comes up, you get some options to choose from. Uh, you choose the most appropriate options. You can interact a little bit with those uh, charts. You can hover over them, tell you some information. And you can also reuse those charts. So you can download them uh, into a graphics file and then take it into the package if you want to put it in a Word document or a PDF document. It's one of the first things that we do in processing our data is we put the data into Stat Explore and that allows us to quality assure it and we use the chart and functionality extensively to do that. It's particularly powerful at picking up uh, potential issues across geographies or across time series. It allows you to uh, uh, very quickly to see if there are any issues that need further investigating. Some broad figures from uh, Stat Explore since it was launched about two years ago. So we started off with just a very small data set and we gradually built up over the past two years. So we've got over 4,500 registered users uh, of Stat Explore. You, as I said before, you don't need to register to use Stat Explore, but there are some key features uh, that you get extra if you do register. So I, it's, a, it's, a big, uh, it's a big deal for us uh, that 4,500 people have gone to the effort to register uh, and that has enabled us to speak to those 4,500 people. Uh, and know who they are to some extent. 
Uh, over the past two, two years, we've had almost 60,000 tables built. So that's 60,000 tables, that a large proportion of which we would have had to have produced those tables if Stat Explore wasn't in, in existence. Just some of the key benefits. We refer now to Stat Explore extensively. So if we get a freedom of information request, if we get a parliamentary question, if that data is available in Stat Explore, we tell the MP or their researcher, we tell the requester to go away and get that, those statistics yourself. We can publish statistics more quickly. We used to, when we publish benefit statistics, by the time we publish them, they were about five months out of date, which isn't great. For universal credit, one of the sets of statistics that we publish on universal credit is how many claims have been made. We know how many claims have been made every day, and we publish that every we publish statistics every month. The claims made figure is only is less than a week out of date by the time we publish it. We know that we're starting to get use feedback from users, and we can act on that feedback really quickly. As a government department in the UK, we lead the way in open data, uh, and that's particularly because of Stat Explore. Uh, so, so we're able to demonstrate to the Cabinet Office in the UK, which, are, which lead the policy on open data. Every government department has to report their progress on open data every quarter. Uh, um, um, Stat Explore is, is the example that our department uses every time. So we're, the, the, the people who coordinate those responses are forever coming back to me about what's the latest development on Stat Explore, what can it do next, etc. So we lead the way. Our statistics have had much more exposure because more people are accessing them. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. So we don't restrict. One of, one of the risks of, of putting lots of data out there is that we don't control it anymore. We know that a lot of pressure groups, a lot of people who are critical of government policy in the UK use Stat Explore and use the statistics uh, as a result. And in most cases, use those statistics really responsibly and put, put across uh, for them really good arguments. So we know they're being used much more widely. Finally, I thought I'd put this in. Okay, so, so we, do, we do have a really good work, working relationship with Spacetime. I think the size of the, the company of Spacetime means that, that we can implement developments and changes really quickly. If there are any issues, they get resolved really quickly. Uh, I can imagine if we, if we were working, and we do work with very large companies, uh, IBM and Hewlett Packard and those sorts of companies as well. If you want changes made to software, you're talking years. I, th I think it's fair to say that we've had changes implemented in our versions of the software within a matter of weeks. Uh, the final slide is just my contact details. So if anybody wants to ask me any questions about our implementation of the software or, or anything that's going on in the, in the UK as a whole in terms of the benefit statistics, give us a shout, send us an email, grab me at some point uh, afterwards. I'd be very pleased to talk to any of you. Thank you very much.